Well, I, I just haven't got any notes. I haven't got any outline, and it's a long road, but I'll try to do what I can in the time I've got. Um, yeah, I was born in Toowoomba. Uh, I'm 75 years old now. When I was 10 year old, I end up uh, started boxing. Uh, so it turned out I got beat by a uh, Brisbane school, uh, Queensland school boys champion after about two weeks training of boxing. So I could have been a boxer. I ended up playing football. My father played for Queensland, should have played for Australia only for an injury. Uh, I could have been a footballer. But I ended up, he said, make a few dollars and you can be a jockey and make a few dollars. So I ended up being a jockey. Started being a jockey, eventually got married, ended up with uh, a couple of children, three children, sorry. And uh, I'm trying, a bit, a bit nervous trying to do this really quick and I've got no guideline at the moment. Sure, sure. Uh, sure. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I got, I got married and that was uh, looking on the outward appearance instead of on the heart. And so it didn't work out very well in the long run. And I got so discouraged when uh, that didn't work out. Uh, I won't go into all the details. But then uh, eventually I spent about 11 or 13 years there trying to build a house and raise a family and stuff. And then I end up, uh, end up met Karen when she was only very, very young. And uh, end up on on and off with Karen uh, on drugs for about another 11 or 12 years or 13 or whatever. And end up a heroin, speed freak to start with, then a heroin addict, then the both, then both at the eventually at the end of it. Um, yeah, so that's where I actually happened to end up with the two best apprentices in the meantime, before I got on the drugs, I end up uh, had the two best apprentices that's anywhere in the bush in could win in Sydney anywhere. Uh, end up reasonable horse trainer, and so I thought I was going great guns, and then ended up eventually split up with the wife. End up long story on the drugs, and end up about seven years on that. And uh, Karen rang me up one day and said. Uh, Hey, do you want my Buddhas? Because she had a lot of Buddhas and she was having a little enclave. We lived in a caravan at one stage for a while. And she said, I said, what are you talking about? She said, oh, I went to this church and they not, I can't have Buddhas anymore. So I said, keep your Buddhas, they brainwashed you. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so anyhow, she showed me where that church was and I went around that church and one day to pick her up to take her to church, but you know, if anyone saw any idea what it's like a drug world, she wouldn't go on that day. So I said, because what happened was, I got to a point where I'd used my whole house, my house, my family, everything was gone, or I had a couple of horses left in training, whatever, but, uh, and I was riding track work still, but I um, had come to a very low point I was actually like to the gutter. I'd got to the gutter. And so I went to this church. Something just, uh, I decided to go because I actually, I, I'll say this, what caused me to go there was I seen Karen frantic on the phone ringing up for some drugs. She, uh, she won't mind me telling you this, I'm, I'm sure, because a good testimony. She's yeah. here, she's here today. Amen. And I went to this place and she was waiting for some drugs and she was frantic and so she rang up these people that had got her into this Pentecostal church. And so they come, they dropped their tea and everything and came round. One was witnessing to a bloke laying on a mattress on the ground, the young man. And he kept saying all these things he needed. He needed some drugs, he needed this, he was sick and all. He said, mate, you need Jesus Christ. Amen. You need Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. That's what you need, and he Amen. kept saying that. So I ended up going to that. The next time when I was supposed to be carrying up, I decided to go. She'd showed me where that church was, so I went, and them young people were there. So I went there, started trying to do everything I could. 
for God. Bloke was preaching on missions, and uh, yeah, and I thought I can't be a missionary, but uh, I might be able to be a helper or something. Anyhow, I was going to try and do everything. A couple of weeks later, I was only there two weeks, and uh, we were in Moors one day, scouting around there, doing what you do when you're still not, not even saved, really. <laughs> <laughs> just going to a church, really. And, uh, and then our Karen come in and said, Mick Kane's outside. And the last time I seen Mick Kane, he'd come looking before me with a gun because he'd give me, his wife off her face had given me two weights of heroin, really top grade, instead of two weights of speed. And so he'd come looking for it and he had another rebel bikey with him. And he said, if you hadn't had handed it over to me that day, you know what would have happened. <laughs> so I give it to him, of course. Uh, but he got saved. Mick Cain got saved. Uh, that was bit before I saw him at Woolworths. That was the last time I seen him when he came looking for me with a gun. And so I went. I gave him the heroin. This day he'd got saved. I'd come up here. I was at Cloundra on a methadone program at Cloundra. Uh, living at Sunshine Beach Caravan Park in the caravan I just took off my mum and put box trailer papes on it and drove it up, uh, towed it up to Sunshine Beach at Cloundra and I was on Nambour, a methadone clinic and yeah so when Karen come into Woolworths and I was still in there she come in she said hey Mick Kane's out of the car wants to see you. I thought oh yeah right eh. <laughs> What's going on here? So he goes out. Anyhow, he's all changed. He hasn't got. He's not dirty. Not got this long beard, and he's just got a mo, and he's all clean, all different. And I said, oh yeah, what's that? He said, oh Karen told me that you started going to church. And I said, yeah. He said, has anyone showed you? And he picked his. He said, he said has anyone showed you from the Bible there how to be saved yet? I said, uh, oh, they've laid hands on me and I've been in one of their fall down services and thought that was funny. Uh, I seen them give the girl that they took there to do the act on the floor, they cast the devils out of. I said, I seen them give her $20 afterwards. Uh, and so I said, no, I, I started doing everything I can. But he said, has anyone showed you from the Bible how to be saved? I said, no, not actually. He said, well, come round to my place and I'll show you from the Bible how to be saved. Amen. And so I knew it was Jesus Christ. One thing about the church, I don't know what it was, just God. God didn't use anyone. He used a donkey. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so uh, he, I went round to his house, but even, even to follow him round to his house because Mick Cain was a bad man. He was like a bikey. And he used to, if he didn't like someone, you come to his door, he'd smile at you and then when you uh, grab you by the shirt, pull you inside and flog, probably half kill you, you know. So I was a bit hesitant even thinking about it. Then I thought, oh, right, okay, righto. So I went round to his house and he got out and then he, I basically showed me the Romans Road. I don't know how much time I, yeah, that's gone, okay. I, um, yeah, he basically showed me the Romans Road, but he showed me every, everything I need to know. I got a, in this little Bible here, I got a uh, street preaching. Uh, I just got these notes in here, Romans 3.16, of course everyone knows, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And he went through the Romans Road and a great number of verses there but you'd probably all know them all and you'd hear them all. So I'm just trying to keep it short. But yeah, so I prayed. Um, he went through it so clearly, showed me. I sat down with him. He showed me so clearly from the Bible because he was, he got saved three years before me. Uh, when he was in jail, my old pastor Wheat, who gave me this tie with the lamb and the lion. Uh, my old pastor led him to the Lord in the Raman Centre and uh, then when he found me, he led me to the Lord. And so then I did 
Bible Institute, two lots of two years, so I did really four years. And uh, the Lord called me up. I got saved. I, oh, sorry. He actually said to me after he showed me from the, all the verses from the Bible, and I understood all, he clearly presented the, uh, the gospel to me and how to be saved. And I uh, said, so you see the wages of sin and death, or the gift of God is a... Wages of sin and death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And he showed me the lake of fire and uh, hell, the lake of fire. And so whosoever uh, was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. He said, so what's it, what do you reckon? And uh, would you have any trouble admitting to God that you're a sinner? And we both had to, had to laugh, had to laugh a really lot about that. And I said, no. And I kneeled down on his lino, old lino kitchen floor and prayed and asked the Lord to save me. Yeah, that's about almost 30 years ago. Amen. And after that, I knew the Lord. Next couple of services I went to, a man preached, uh, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. And uh, I, when the man said go, I knew that it just echoed. I looked around everywhere to see if everyone else jumped or something because it just echoed through my ears. So eventually, after being saved, uh, I um, did Bible Institute and then eventually after about nine years uh, uh, the Lord called me up to Alice Springs to do a mission, uh, be a missionary to the Aboriginal people in Central Australia. So I was up there for six years until I ended up back here for a lot of reasons and it take too long to explain. Uh, but uh, that's basically it. Um, I went from the guttermost to the uttermost. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 